right, and we are live. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in to another SourceGraph live stream. Uh, my name is Otto Kukic. I'm the director of DevRel uh, here at SourceGraph. And with me, I have a special guest today, uh, Josh Goldberg, uh, the author of the Learning TypeScript book, um, as well as uh, Justin Dorfman, who's helping me on, on the background. So Justin's going to be in the comments. If you have any questions, please send them our way. Uh, Josh, welcome. Welcome to the show. It's so great to have you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here, hey, everyone. <clears throat> awesome. Um, do you want to do a uh, quick introduction just to let folks know a little bit about your background and, uh, and you? Absolutely. Um, I grew up in upstate New York, shout out upstate New York, uh, but I live in Philadelphia now. I'm actually moving to Boston in the fall. So if anyone knows TypeScript things in the Boston area, let me know. Uh, but I used to work at Codecademy previously before that Microsoft, uh, but these days I work as a full-time independent open source maintainer, which means instead of working for any one lovely company such as SourceGraph, I do work on general open source projects in the ecosystem. Uh, the main project I work on is TypeScript ESLint which is the project that lets you run standard JavaScript tools like ESLint and Prettier on your TypeScript code. Um, I'm also on the teams for Mocha, the test framework, which is still alive, fun fact, and ESLint itself. So uh, I'm, I'm just generally excited about dev tooling and static analysis and stuff in the TypeScript space, which is part of why I wrote a book through O'Reilly called Learning TypeScript, uh, which I think of as right now the most fun way to learn TypeScript if you know absolutely nothing about programming other than JavaScript and maybe other stuff, but not required. That's me. Right on. And you're also the creator and maintainer of the uh, Create TypeScript app starter, right? Yes. Yeah, I had so many <laughs> repos where I just copy and pasted the same tooling and then touched it up over the years that I got annoyed and decided to make a thing for everyone. <laughs> Love it. Well, uh, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Uh, I myself have worked with TypeScript for for many years, but uh, it is you know it, it really changes the way that that you think about code. Um, you know, for me, when I first got started with TypeScript, I, I would always complain that oh, it's making me much slower. Oh, I have to think about the code that I'm writing. I can't just throw everything and and just expect it to work. But um, you know, once you really get into it, once you understand that the benefits of TypeScript, it really does uh, make you a much better developer. It increases the quality of the software that, that you put out and uh, helps you avoid a bunch of uh, errors and bugs and just little things that, that uh, you might not be thinking about when, when you're just trying to move fast. <clears throat> so uh, I'm really excited to, to talk much more about um, TypeScript today and, and just you know, the, the way that, that you're using it. And we'll also uh, write a little bit of TypeScript um, and, and play around with TypeScript in um, the projects that you have on your uh, learning typescript.com books. So we can walk through those a little bit and also show how uh, with Kodi AI, you can uh, leverage Kodi to help you uh, either convert JavaScript to TypeScript or write better TypeScript. And uh, we'll get into all of that throughout the, throughout the episode today. Um, awesome. But before we dive into all of that, for, for viewers that might not be familiar with TypeScript, can you tell us a little bit more about what is TypeScript? What are types and why should you as a developer, if you're not already working uh, with TypeScript or with the type language, why you should consider it? I would love to. Thank you for asking. The big, uh, the big lovely thing that uh, got me into JavaScript was that JavaScript is fun and kind of a wild west, we like to call it. There are no types. There's no way for you to say in your code in JavaScript land, this must be a string for a variable. Or like this function takes in this number of parameters. And if you pass in too many or too few, something should yell at you. Uh, people have written libraries to do that, things like Zod. But there's nothing baked into the language, which means it can be really fun to get started in JavaScript. You just write some stuff, throw that crap onto a web page or a node or whatever, and then you have code running. But when you start having to maintain things or when you have bigger projects, when you have 10 files, 50 files, 100, thousands of files, it gets really annoying and really, really inconvenient to not have descriptions of what stuff is supposed to be, uh, the intent behind the code. So TypeScript gives you a few things to, to help with that. Uh, it gives you a nice syntax in the language to be able to annotate what's called a type annotation, what something is supposed to be. 
And it gives you a tool called a type checker, which looks at your code and lets you know whenever you do something that seems to mismatch the intent. Like let's say you made a variable, said it's only ever gonna be a number, and then you put a Boolean in there. Well, that's probably wrong or a mistake or the type was wrong. So TypeScript really lets you write more JavaScript uh, a lot more smoothly with fewer bugs and with better developer tooling at the cost of being a little more restrictive in how you write it and sometimes having to use these type annotations to tell it what you meant in the first place. TypeScript. That's good. <laughs> I, I, I love it. I, you know, and I think um, th that's where I, I feel like a lot of developers get, get hung up when first approaching TypeScript. Uh, you know, they're like, oh, well, now my code, you know, with TypeScript, you know, you can set, uh, you know, if your code, for example, uh, doesn't pass all of the, the type checks, or if you're doing something incorrectly, you know, in, in most cases, your code could still run. But with the awesome build tools and, and just the environment of TypeScript, you know, you can make sure that if you deploy an application or if you deploy some code and it doesn't pass all the type checks, uh, you know, that build doesn't go out. And uh, we do that with our uh, marketing side at Sourcegraph. It is a TypeScript Next.js application. Um, and we strictly enforce all of the all of the types on it, which sometimes when I'm you know just trying to go in there and add a quick component, you know do something quick and dirty, I'm throwing in you know any's and you know not uh, not using TypeScript to its uh, full capacity and the way it's meant to be done. And then when I go to create a PR, uh, the R tooling is you know, starts telling me, hey, you know, we're not going to deploy this, go and go and fix your code and <laughs> take a step back, yeah. which, uh, you know, is definitely something that, you know, helps maintain our code in the long run. And if you're just a solo developer, you know, you're just writing um, some simple applications, maybe TypeScript isn't for you. But but if you're building something that other developers are going to look at, other developers are going to touch, and you want it to be maintainable in the long run, I feel like you know doubling down on, on a type system and TypeScript would, would definitely be a, a boon for you and, and a boon for uh, other people that have to look at and work with your code. For sure. I love the comment, by the way, that just got started momentarily on the stream. I hated TypeScript until I was forced to use it at my job. Now I got hooked. There is, yeah. as you said, there there is overhead there. I mean, you're adding in things that then slow people down. You have to add type annotations in some cases. You have to, you know, integrate into your build system. You have to deal with it yelling at you and giving red squigglies. Eh. But, you know, long term, that tends to be useful. Uh, I, go, I personally go by, give or take, a rule of three. Um, if I'm working with at least three files or um, at least three like features or something like that, or at least three people, then I would probably lean towards TypeScript, um, which is the, the kind of threshold that takes me. And I've seen take a lot of people from, I hate this. Why am I doing this extra crap to, oh, this is useful. I really like this. And oftentimes too, I could never work in script land without it, which is where I currently am. Yeah, I think that the rule of three, I, I like that. I'm going to I'm going to start adopting that. But <laughs> I feel like, you know, these days uh, and uh, let me know if you disagree, but I almost feel like in the JavaScript ecosystem, I feel like TypeScript has won the hearts and minds of developers. And I feel like most new developers or, or you know, most new projects or most existing projects that, that have any sort of adoption are opting out for for TypeScript by default. And are you know more and more so becoming TypeScript projects as opposed to just you know plain old JavaScript projects? Would you agree with that? Yes, everything you said is pretty much accurate and correct. But I have learned the hard way to to add some caveats there. Um, for starters, you can still write in JavaScript with all these TypeScript first or TypeScript supporting frameworks. Um, most frameworks these days have great TypeScript support built in, and many will even encourage their users the way, for example, Angular does to, hey, you should really use TypeScript. If you're working at our scale, at the scale where a framework like, for example, Angular is worth it, it's extremely rare that TypeScript isn't worth the cost. Not impossible, but rare. Um, there are some frameworks, by the way, that use TypeScript and don't use those type annotations. They just use the TypeScript tooling. Uh, this this hit the news last year with, I think it was SvelteKit and Svelte. Um, they're still using TypeScript, for example, but you can opt out of the type annotations and instead use the 
pseudo standard community thing called JSDoc, which is a way to describe types in your JavaScript comments. The disadvantage there is that JSDoc is more verbose and obnoxious to deal with than TypeScript type annotations, but doesn't require a build step to turn your TypeScript code into JavaScript, which can really simplify some build tools. So yeah, you don't have to use TypeScript. You never have. And I hope we never get to a world where you do have to use it because we should always be flexible. And if uh, you know a competitor or a next thing comes out, we want to be able to switch to it easily. But these mm -hmm. days, the vast majority of web devs and companies and so on at least want to and likely do use TypeScript. Yeah. I think that makes sense. And yeah, that's one of the, the great things about TypeScript. You can use bits and pieces of it uh, to, to suit your development needs, to suit your project needs as opposed to to it being a, a one, you know, you can adopt it progressively, you can start adding type annotations if you want, or you can just start leveraging the tooling and adding the type annotations later. So, so it's really a flexible, uh, flexible way to, to, you know, gives you that flexibility to, um, you know, take what you want, what you need for a specific project, and, uh, you know, you still have the rest of it available if the need for it comes later, or if not, you still get get to leverage some of the uh, some of the awesome tooling. For sure, yeah. <clears throat> um, awesome. Well, uh, I, I think that kind of answered uh, some of some of the questions of why you would want to use uh, why you would want to use TypeScript. Uh, are there any other comparisons that, that you would make? Uh, between JavaScript and, and TypeScript, like like when, when you think about the difference between the two, uh, you know, you talked about the rule of three. If if there's three people touching code, or if you're working in more than three files, TypeScript makes sense. But comparing TypeScript to, to JavaScript, are there any other comparisons that that you would like to call out, having worked with with both for so long and and written the book on it? Sure. Uh, I want to note for the audience that we did not plan these questions ahead of time, but that is a perfect, that's a great question. Thank you for asking that. That's just good interview technique right there. Uh, yeah. So the one of the big value props that TypeScript gives is its tooling APIs that allow development tools to be built better. Um, I'm on the teams of both ESLint and TypeScript ESLint. ESLint is the standard JavaScript linter. It can let you know if like you violate your team's naming conventions or if you do something that's like probably a bug. And TypeScript ESLint uh, is like a plugin. Literally, it is a plugin for ESLint that adds TypeScript specific stuff. Um, so JavaScript on its own, because the language doesn't have a types specification or concept, um, ES and therefore ESLint, it doesn't understand types. ESLint wouldn't be able to say, look at your code and say, hey, I see you import this function from that other file, and then you call the function, and then you don't handle the promise that it generates. It's floating. ESLint on its own generally can't do that very well. But when you add in types, like with TypeScript, and therefore with TypeScript ESLint, you can. So being able to have a lot more powerful dev tooling is actually one of the benefits of TypeScript. Even if you're you know, using Ennies, which is the like the escape hatch type, the like kind of not doing it quite perfectly, uh, TypeScript still lets your build tooling give you a lot of really nice things that wouldn't have been really possible in just native or raw JavaScript you know, without it. So that's that's one of the reasons why even even ignoring the language's benefits itself, the stuff that it makes better is for me benefit enough to be really excited about it. I think that makes perfect sense. And, and yeah, I think my <clears throat> my approach uh, to to working in in TypeScript projects, you know, especially if, if it's you know something evergreen, a new feature, I will use any's left and right while while doing the the you know, quick iterations, quick development, just to get something working. Once I'm happy with it, I'll go back in and add the proper types and make sure that that it still works. Um, and that's kind of kind of the, the good compromise that I found that works really well for me, where I can still move fast, try a bunch of things, um, not have to worry about the type system until I'm happy with the implementation. And now I want to make sure that it's scalable and more maintainable and that it actually works once we add the types and I, I didn't you know, introduce any new, any new bugs or, or any weird functionality that the regular um, JavaScript <laughs> would kind of give me a pass on. Um, and that's, that's kind of my approach. <clears throat> awesome. Love to hear it. Um, Sweet. Well, uh, you know, we, we've talked about TypeScript a little bit. Uh, do you want to uh, kind of show us a couple of examples of 
uh, how you write TypeScript or, or just kind of give us a high level introduction to writing some TypeScript code. And then I can kind of take it from there and, and show some of the uh, deeper examples that you have, and then maybe show developers how they can use Kodi uh, to enhance their TypeScript uh, TypeScript development. Awesome, yeah. Um, I'm attempting to share my screen. I don't know if StreamYard... There it is! Yay! There you go. Great. So if you want to get started with TypeScript, you don't have to install anything. Uh, it does come with VS Code, and a lot of other editors either you know, just have it or have a really nice plugin you can get. But uh, typescriptline.org slash play is the domain typescriptline.org playground. Typescriptline.org is the site for TypeScript. It's got a whole bunch of docs. So as much as I should be telling people to go buy my book, the best way to get started is to just read the TypeScript docs. They're actually quite good. Uh, of course, buy my book too, et cetera, et cetera. But the playground on typescriptline.org is this really nice interactive little thing. It uses Monaco, which is the same text editor as VS Code, fun fact, on the left where you can type in your TypeScript. And on the right is the equivalent JavaScript. And ignoring this use strict thing, which I'm trying to convince them to turn off by default, it's not relevant. Uh, oftentimes, it's the same. Console to log hello world in TypeScript. TypeScript is what's called a superset of JavaScript, meaning it's JavaScript plus some other stuff. If you don't use the other stuff, they're just the same language. Boom. If you hit run, it then executes it and shows you the logs. Yay. Great. Any any questions or comments so far? This all makes sense and sound good. So far, so good. And uh, I think before we uh, before we continue, uh, I will say, uh, why don't we pick a random winner uh, at the end of uh, at the end of this stream? Whoever's online, and uh, we'll buy them a uh, a copy of your book and uh, send it out to them. So uh, tune in till, till the end, and uh, we'll pick a winner and uh, send them a, a copy of the book. Well, I'd really, I'd love that. Thank you. I appreciate it. But cool, TypeScript has types, and that's what we're excited about. So let's show some. Let's say that I wanted to have a uh, const, uh, I don't know, value, uh, and that's set to one, two, three, and then I log it. Uh, this is fine. This is good. We don't need TypeScript to let us know because TypeScript knows that what we're doing is fine. Uh, if we, let's say, look at uh, the variable, if we hover over it, we see value one, two, three. And we know that console.log takes in dot, 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 any number of arguments, any array. So it's a saying an array of anything. But maybe our value is a little, uh, little I don't know, more dynamic. Let's say it's math.random, let's say 50-50 chance of happy, true, message, yay, or sad, true, reason, uh, doesn't have time to learn TypeScript yet, set base. Here, TypeScript actually uh, understands the type of this value and understands that it's either an object with these things, happy, message, no sad, no reason, or an object with sad and a reason, no happy, no message. So that's when people when people write JavaScript, TypeScript will often be able to decipher what they mean by it. But I don't actually really like the way this object looks. So I'm going to start typing out some uh, types here. I'm going to say interface uh, happy value has stuff. I'm going to say happy true. And then interface sad value. Actually, I'm going to say happy false. Let's, uh, let's switch. That's not the word I'm looking for. And then happy value as message string and reason string. So now when I say uh, a value can either be, this is the syntax where you can type an either or, we see that value is either a happy value or sad value. And now if I try to console.log, log, let's say value dot message, and we look at the TypeScript complaints, TypeScript knows that this is this is wrong. We might not be able to do what we're trying to do because what happens if the value is happy false reason? If we run it, we get a 50-50 chance of the JavaScript crashing. So yeah. this is an example of where TypeScript can actually find a bug for us. It can let us know, hey, you silly goose, property message doesn't exist on this type because it might not exist on sad. So it would encourage us to do something like if value.happy, then console log which would mean TypeScript knows inside this if statement value 
dot happy is true, which means value must be a happy value. So it does have a message. Yay. How does that feel? Any questions or comments so far? Uh, let's see, taking a look. <clears throat> um, looks like no questions yet, but, but uh, I mean, that, that I think is a, a perfect example of why having the the type system makes a lot of sense because if you know working with uh, JavaScript code, uh, you could totally do do the first thing with the you know the the sad value having a reasoned string for you know whatever the error is and I've seen this in many different APIs. Well, they'll return different um, different types of data back and sometimes it might be message, it might be messages, it might be reason it might be you know something else entirely so you either have to write a bunch of code to handle all of those cases or if you have a strongly typed system then you can be like okay you know this this value you know it's gonna have a happy boolean and it's gonna have a message for why you're happy you know why you're happy or why you're sad um and it just makes you at the end of the day you know you you've implemented one interface but you have much more maintainable code it, it's much easier to read and as soon as you have something like a reason instead of message it it'll complain to you and and you'll know okay you know i either have to go update the interface and change everything or i can just tell my backend developer you know send me a message back on a reason absolutely yeah um it's funny that what you were just talking about, like having you know APIs return different shapes or like communication cross platform. Uh, one of the things in coding that was developed to fix that or to help with that is the concept of an algebraic data type, very nicely commented by I'm going to guess that's pronounced pre Nova in the chat. Um, what I'm showing here is actually a, a instance of a common TypeScript pattern that is basically equivalent to an algebraic data type. This is called a uh, discriminated union or discriminated type union. Uh, where you can say like type, whatever, it's either value, let's call it, is one thing or another. Um, so yes, people have come up with all these different patterns, like, you know, schema validation and, and data types and discriminated type unions, referring to uh, one discriminant field, in this case, the happy fields, uh, determining which possible type it is. Um, so TypeScript type system, it's not built to force opinions on your code. It's built to represent the concepts that your code was doing already. So if you're doing a standard concept like, let's say, a class inheritance for our OOP friends or algebraic data types or immutable code for our functional friends, then like the type system is there to help you use that strategy, whichever one it is you wanted to use. Love that. As to whether you can avoid the Boolean, I don't know. I'm not familiar enough with algebraic data types. I thought this was the algebraic data type, so maybe I'm wrong there. You learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, this is this is really great. And, and yeah, I mean, I love that that you called out that TypeScript is a, a superset uh, of JavaScript. So any any valid JavaScript you have is, you know, going to technically going to be valid TypeScript, but uh, with with that additional, um, you know, with that additional language support, the additional tooling, the the, the type system. Um, and once you, you know, I feel like it can be intimidating at the start, and, and it was definitely intimidating for me uh, when I first started. But once you get used to to writing it, I mean, I feel like you you can't go back. <laughs> yeah, um, I can't. I have such a hard time. I can. Sometimes I have to. But the whole time I'm writing in a non-types project, I'm grumbling to myself, where are my types? How do I know what anything is? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Awesome. It looks like we have another question from uh, Kim Lo, and uh, he asks, when working with uh, VS Code extensions, uh, specifically web views, is it better to use JavaScript in the code or convert the usual, convert the usual WebJS into TypeScript? That's a, that's a very specific question. I'm sure it's a good one, but I don't know the domain of web views and VS Code extensions well enough to answer that. I can answer in general. Um, I personally prefer to write in TypeScript and then compile to JavaScript for all the lovely reasons we've mentioned. Um, but if the project is somehow unusual and fancy and different, then I don't know if that opinion holds up. Um, I will say, though, that uh, people have gotten pretty good at building tools that take your TypeScript and turn it into JavaScript and or run it for you. Um, like a lot of my projects, if I'm writing scripts, 
uh, I'm not writing a tool to convert the TypeScript to JavaScript and then a different tool from a different command running the uh, JavaScript. I'm typically using a tool like TSX um, or like Node with a, uh, like a TypeScript loader or something to just run my TypeScript files directly so that the tools will compile them to JavaScript for me so I don't have to do two commands. I don't know if that's relevant here, but it's something I've been enjoying recently. We on. <clears throat> um, and then uh, Kidlo followed up with, and I'll throw it up on the screen here. So it's basically embedding a website into a uh, Visual Studio Code web view, but not like through a basic iframe, but rather running it natively within the extension. Um, so I don't know if that gives additional context. I'm kind of reading the original question to see if sure. I can make a full <laughs> sense of it myself. Um, this is what happens in all these streams. We start talking about a general thing, and then someone has a question about something rather specific that that no one knows, but is I I, I guarantee you I will go on like a three hour like whatever equivalent of Wikipedia like GitHub or whatnot binge after this and learn all about it. Uh, but yeah, in general, if you're writing a an extension or any sort of project uh, that uses JavaScript, you can probably you can almost certainly do it in TypeScript. Um, it's yeah. up to you and your build tooling whether you want to do it in TypeScript syntax or JavaScript. But I, it has been a very long time since I've found any kind of project where I haven't wanted to use TypeScript at you know scale of more than three. Makes sense. And, and actually, I think this might be a uh, might be a good question to ask Cody, and we can uh, throw it in there in a, in a second and uh, see what <laughs> what Cody has Smart. to say. Um, but yeah, let me uh, share my screen now. And uh, I, I do want to call out your website here as well, the, the learningtypescript.com, uh, kind of the accompanying website for the book, which has a number of projects, a number of articles. And um, how, how different is the learningtypescript.com website from the book? Is, is it meant to be more of a uh, kind of like once you're going through the book to, to do the exercises or how much of the content um, on the website is in the book itself? Good question. There's almost no overlap. Um, oh, okay. The, the, the book uh, suggests that you go to the website at the end of each chapter to practice what you learned in that chapter. And the website mm -hmm. has projects, at least uh, roughly two for every chapter. Um, but that's that's the only link that the two have. I intentionally set it up so that you don't need to read the book to benefit from the projects on the website. I don't like it when there's that like you know tie-in, you know, buy yeah. my thing and then you can. Um, and then separately, there are also a bunch of articles on the website for stuff that I found to be useful that I didn't have space or at the time ability to cover in the book. Things like you know nuances the TS config target or TypeScript and semantic versioning the eternal battle. Got it. Wow, this is a uh, really really awesome stuff. So yeah, highly encouraged. Uh, Justin shared the link, learningtypescript.com is the website. Uh, definitely give it, a, give it a look, check it out, and uh, check out 28 different projects for learning and mastering TypeScript. Um, and then uh, Prinova has another question. I love um, this so much. Prinova, you're one of my favorite <laughs> chat people already over this, this current calendar year. This is great. Keep them coming. So the question is, how to handle data flow in a bigger project when utilizing the structuring. For me, it is very difficult to follow the data execution flow. Mm. I see two questions in there. Um, there's the high level, like how to handle data flow in a bigger project question. And there's also the smaller question of like specific syntax pieces like destructuring, which is when you do like const squiggly brackets, something equals object to say, which is the equivalent of const something equals object dot something. Um, those are two questions um, that kind of flow naturally from the smaller into the bigger. So I'm going to try to answer the smaller one first. Uh, TypeScript is generally pretty good at understanding the data flow in your code. Um, if you, if you, for example, use a discriminated type or an algebraic data type, um, TypeScript, as we saw you know, ten minutes ago, can narrow down, can it can perform some inference. You know, if you say if value dot happy, then all the stuff that is only there if value.happy is there in that if statement. Um, for the most part, TypeScript tries to understand destructuring. But if you're doing really wacky stuff with the variables, if you're like assigning them to other places and then like using async callbacks and all sorts of stuff, um, TypeScript might not be able to infer the stuff you want it to. 
for example, a really big thing that people get tripped up on is narrowing when TypeScript knows something more specific about your types isn't always preserved across function calls. Like if you do a set timeout inside that set timeout, well, how is TypeScript supposed to know that that function is executed asynchronously? Or how would TypeScript know that all those things you asserted in your code are still true by the time that function gets called? So if you're doing stuff that's risky or that isn't statically analyzable, stuff where like you know it's true, but there's no logical way to tell the computer that it's true, then man, it, TypeScript can't really, there's, there's no good way for TypeScript to represent the thing. So my answer there would be to A, try to refactor code to be less wacky, where wacky, to, wacky is not a negative term. It's just, you know, some things are more complex than others. Or B, there are escape hatches in the type system. You can use like an exclamation mark or um, like the, the as, the type assertion operator. So does that make sense uh, to the, the first question, the destructuring one? I don't know. Well, I'm just ask, answering to the void or whatnot. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll see if we know. But I think it, it made sense. It makes sense to me. Um, would you say using the like like the question mark uh, to to check for the existence of uh, of a type or the existence of a field? Would you see using a lot of those as kind of an anti pattern that that you might be doing something wrong, or it, would you say it's just kind of good convention and, and good practice? And if you're uh doing it that way it's it's totally fine Ooh, it's a good question um i think there are it could be either depending on the usage there are several punctuation other than period operators in javascript slash typescript that are kind of sometimes they're good sometimes they're not so there's the exclamation mark which is the non-null assertion which is a typescript only thing it's a type system operator saying i'm promising you typescript the thing to the left of this operator is not Null or undefined. I promise I'm mm -hmm. asserting the keyword that it exists. There's also then the question mark dot or um, optional chaining operator, which is a JavaScript thing, which says access the property of this thing if it's not null or undefined. So it's like also the called safe operation or the safe uh, dot. Then there's question mark, question mark, which again is just JavaScript. That's null is coalescing, which says if this thing ex is, exists and is not null or undefined, also, it's like and and, but doesn't allow zero or empty string, rather not null or undefined falsies. So if you're doing those all over the place in your code, um, that might be fine. But if you're mm -hmm. finding that uh, you're doing them a, a lot, uh, it might be a sign that your code is, has a lot of unnecessarily optional things. Um, I I don't see. What because I have my create TypeScript app starter, I'm always running with really strict linting. So I use the TypeScript ESLint rule, no unnecessary condition, which lets me know if I'm doing those things unnecessarily. So as mm -hmm. long as you're not doing them unnecessarily, it's probably fine. If you're using a lot of exclamation marks, then that's probably a sign that your code is not structured in a way that TypeScript can easily understand. But there are always edge cases and architectures where that's just how things go. Uh, so you know, does that answer the question you you were looking for? I think it, it it totally does it, and yeah, I think at the end of the day, you know, if you rely on your linter to to enforce good practices, uh, it it you know, if you're running into um, I feel like lint issues a lot with your code, then uh, I think it it should give you some hints that that maybe you're either over engineering or you know you're adding a lot of extra necessary stuff that might not necessarily need to be there. So yeah, I think that helps. Sure. Um, uh -huh. I still want to answer the previous question and this this new one about libraries um, for data okay. flow in a bigger project. It's honestly a very oh that too. It's honestly a very okay. similar answer. Um, I try to lean on the idea that TypeScript should only understand and represent the way your code is supposed to go. So as long as the concepts in your code are straightforward and understandable, for the most part, you're not going to have too bad of a time trying to represent them in TypeScript. So like if you have a function that relies on the return value from another function, you might use a shared interface or type to represent those things. But if the second function takes in the first function type, but only if it's, you know, only if it's an even number of fields, or if it modifies the type to have like a different casing for the properties, or like some weird wacky stuff like that, you can represent that in the type system. It's shockingly powerful. One of the most powerful type systems in modern development, but it gets confusing. So, 
I try to keep things simple, and then I use types or interfaces to represent every logical shape that I think is, you know, uh, its own idea in the code. Um, as long as you do that and you don't have like weird, wacky stuff happening, I find it much easier to follow the data execution and data flow of of how the code goes. Uh, I guess pause for <laughs> pushback. I'm curious. You work at uh, SourceGraph. Y'all have some pretty, uh, pretty big websites, some pretty big apps. This this large Cody AI project. Have you come across any strategies that you personally do or don't like in that context? Um, good question. Uh, nothing immediately comes to mind, but I will. I'll take a look at, at uh, some of our our own internal projects and uh, maybe write a, a blog post on it to just kind of, because mm -hmm. th this is a very interesting topic. I'm just having a, a kind of a, a brain fart moment trying to think of any specific <laughs> examples. Uh, but definitely, I, I think this would be uh, a pretty good use case to, to just walk through maybe a couple of the, the open source projects or maybe some of the stuff that we're doing internally and just write about it and, and show how we're uh, handling that problem because we we do use TypeScript a lot in in a lot of our different projects. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> um, I can give if if y'all don't mind just a quick answer to that last one from I don't know how to pronounce E N D R E. Um, so generally speaking, uh, the library should either provide its own types like .d .ts files that describe to TypeScript what the library has, or the types should commonly or often exist in what's called definitely typed, which is this massive, one of the biggest open source uh, projects. Uh, it's massive GitHub repo where the community has written that, yeah, written all sorts of type definitions for all sorts of libraries that don't provide their own. Uh, yeah, the types directory. Actually, GitHub had to fix it, some performance issues in its web interface because this thing used to crash the github.com page. Or something. <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> yeah. Not all libraries yeah. do. Sometimes you have to write your own or just use any, which is the, I don't know what this is, the YOLO type. But for the most part, uh, libraries should be well typed, even if the library doesn't provide its own types, uh, especially the popular libraries generally mostly have an entry and definitely typed, which then gets published automatically to NPM under at types slash the name of the library. So real quick, they should all exist. Putting up a random one go. here, Cloudflare, for example. Uh, they have a lot of, so this is like record types, DNS stuff. Cloud. Um, yeah, definitely typed has uh, a lot of different, uh, I feel like any major, even minor, this is, so there's 7,836 entries uh, on here. <laughs> and uh, I think you could even potentially uh, use source graph search uh, or uh, code search um, product on this repo and, and uh, maybe help you find the, the specific types of what you're looking for. Uh, but yeah, I, I would definitely second definitely type as the, uh, as the go-to source. Awesome. Um, and it looks like we got one more question. I, I'm loving these questions, by the way, so keep them coming. Uh, so a question from Slack, why are classes so much more popular in TypeScript than in regular JavaScript? I often <laughs> see more functional style code for JavaScript programs and much more class-based in TypeScript. I'm impressed that your CEO is answering or asking questions. But I'm just, um, so <laughs> there's nothing inherent to TypeScript that leans one towards any particular code style, uh, as long as that code style is reasonably doable to represent the type system. In fact, I even think it's it's easier and more straightforward to represent functional code styles over class based styles. Um, there's so just to be clear, TypeScript, TypeScript does not prefer classes, uh, but that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking, why do we see classes more? There are a lot of programmers who come from paradigms. Java is like the most common one where everything is a class and everything you know uh, is class-based. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of those people then you know keep the same code style when they switch from Java or C Sharp or others um, over to TypeScript. So that's reasonable and fine. You know, TypeScript lets you do whatever you want. Um, but I want to be very clear here because this is a common misconception because of how many people come from like object oriented, class oriented approaches. Um, TypeScript doesn't mind. And in fact, uh, typical JavaScript patterns these days are 
not very class heavy. I would personally even argue that the vast majority of uh, like traditional Java and C sharp uh, code bases grossly misinterpret traditional object oriented and solid design principles. There's no need to prefer inheritance over composition the way many programming, you know, resources used to. So yes, there are there are people who prefer classes, and thus uh, you see those classes show up in TypeScript. But that's not a TypeScript thing. That's just a those people thing. And I think TypeScript's actually, it's easier to represent functional programming in type systems, which is mm -hmm. part of why I personally apply a much more functional approach in my TypeScript code, typically. Makes sense. You've like yeah. triggered my like angry, you know, little developer <laughs> hat here, but I love it. Great question. Love it. And so I'm not sure if this question was from, from actually our, our CEO, Quinn Slack, or just somebody <laughs> viewing the, the live stream and, and just asking a question within our Slack. But uh, Maybe Justin can <laughs> clarify that. But if Quinn is watching, hi Quinn. Hey Quinn. Uh, hey, so it looks like it was uh, Kaylin, one of our uh, one of our engineers hi. and managers. Hi, <laughs> uh, awesome. So yeah, with that, let's uh, let's open up um, VS Code now and maybe take a look at some of these projects and see if uh, if we can use Cody to kind of help us write uh, some TypeScript and see how well it does. Um, before we do that, I do want to ask Cody that that question that we had earlier. Oh yeah. Um, what was the question? So it was um, uh, the the web view one. So when working with and I'll I can't copy and paste the question. So we'll just type it in. I'll open up Visual Studio Code. I'll open up a new chat window here with Cody. And we'll ask when working with VS Code extensions, and we'll say specifically uh, web views, is it better to use JavaScript in the code or convert the usual WebJS into JavaScript? And let's see what Cody has to say to that. It, it's reading context from your uh, projects directory, so I'm not sure how helpful those will be, but let's see. Let's go! <laughs> so. Oof. Oh, look at that. What a thorough answer. Big thorough answer, and so we'll quickly read it. So when working with VS Code extensions and web views, it is generally recommended to use TypeScript. So it is generally recommended to use TypeScript instead of JavaScript. Um, TypeScript offers several advantages. So talking about type safety, enhanced IDE support, better tooling and integration, improved code organization, compatibility with JavaScript, community and ecosystem. Um, so uh, I think yeah. a good answer, but at the same time, it didn't really go in in depth as to why I, I would say. Um, and then that the generally recommended to. You, I mean, I feel like that's a general recommendation. So I would take it with a grain of salt, but <laughs> it gave us an answer. I love how much more nuanced or like you know pros and cons you are for me i'm like this is a great answer i see no fault here but sure you know you 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 are the, uh, a team member of the company that built the product i defer to your opinion uh fair enough cool well hopefully uh kind of that that kind of gives you uh an answer and uh we can uh, we can look into it more and and kind of take it from there but so let's uh, so I have this uh, learning TypeScript projects directory cloned um, to my local uh, to my local device, and we have all of these projects. And so within all of these projects, it kind of teaches you about the various features and various um, capabilities of TypeScript. And correct me if I'm wrong, but each project kind of teaches you a new thing. It gives you a um, read me with instructions on kind of what you're hoping to accomplish or what you're trying to accomplish. It gives you a good starting point, and then it's up to you as the developer trying to learn TypeScript um, 
it's up to you to add the working implementation. Uh, was that a fair high level overview of the project or do you want to tell us a little more about it? That's very fair. I have very little to add to that. Uh, nicely done. Uh, yes, so all the things you said are correct. It, it's, it gives you what you need and it actually, each of them actually does have a solution file with it. You know, don't, don't peek, but um, the way they're organized is uh, by folders that are the slugs of the chapter names. For example, you're in the interfaces chapters folder. And then mm -hmm. each uh, chapter has at least one uh, appetizer project. I'm, I love food. So appetizer project and then at least one entree project. And then some of them also have a dessert where the appetizers are a few small steps. And then the entrees and desserts are like one bigger project. Uh, so for that. generics, for example, um, high dash is it's like the low dash library, like a set of small utilities you can write that use that language feature. And then treasure hunter is a, a longer thing that you would do. Hmm. Awesome. Uh, well, let's see if we could use Cody uh, to to solve one of these. And uh, I think I had opened the interfaces one earlier. Um, so maybe we could quickly read through it and see what we're being asked to do. Um, and interfaces are essentially the type definitions for uh, the, the way that, that you would uh, create types in, in TypeScript. So um, this project is called Playlist Soundness. And uh, so what's up, friend? I'm so pumped you're joining us. We've got a sick project we could totally use your help on. See, someone's giving us amazing recommendations for songs to play, but they're not just coming in as songs. Sometimes they're an album containing an array of songs, and sometimes they're a playlist with a method that returns an array of songs. Uh, we'd like you to write a function for us that takes in an array of those items and returns a result playlist. The result playlist should keep track of which songs appear under each artist, the in-order list of songs, and the total length of time across the playlist. Can you do this for us, please? Um, so for the setup, in one, term in one terminal, run the TypeScript compiler via the TSC script. Um, in another terminal, run jest via the test script to start the tests in watch mode. And then specification, your code should export an unroll playlist function with an explicit type annotation. Um, and the types are, the parameters are items, an array where, where each element is either a song, album, or playlist. Um, the return type is an object with artist, song, and time. So the total length of time across all songs. And notes, uh, don't import any code from one from one step into another. So Harry, I am curious if we copy these instructions and gave them to Cody in the index.ts here. So, so this is where we would implement our project. I wonder if Cody could understand it well enough and give us a solution. Should we try that? I'm so scared that I'm going to have to redo this project to be something Cody can't immediately guess. Very excited to see what happens. <laughs> Let's try it out. So we'll open up a uh, new Cody chat window. And uh, so we could do it in this chat interface. We could also um, ask Cody to edit our, our code in here as well, where we can give it the same set of instructions, the model, and it's just going to kind of do it in line. But Let's try it in the chat. Well, again, we'll use Claw 3 Opus as the most powerful LLM that, that we have that supports uh, that supported in Cody, but we also have, you know, Claw 3 Sonnet or Chat GPT or GPT 4 Turbo. Um, but everybody has had very positive things to say about uh, Claw 3 Opus when it comes to coding related questions. So let's paste uh, the question and see how Cody does. And maybe, maybe we can delete the intro. Um, oops, actually, let me undo this. Uh, let's do it from No, Actually, let's copy, copy and paste the whole thing. I want, I want the, the solutions, comments or names to match the vibe of the readme, you know, <laughs> very important. Fair enough. So let's do it.
So it, again, uh, Cody also read context 660, 669 lines from seven different files. And um, we can actually click in here and see what it looked at. And it looks like it looked at all of the files in this project, very likely looked at this solution uh, file as well. We can Ooh, check that, which is in, in that case, it would very likely give us the, the right answer off the bat, you know, just off the top, but let's, let's see if it does. So it looked at a couple of lines of code from the solution.ts file. Um, but let's see what it came up with and, and if this is um, correct. So what I'll actually do is. That's, that's the solution. That's let's just, that's insert. the, that's the solution. That's the exact code. Uh, so if nicely we done, copy and paste it. <laughs> so we have the interface of a song, album, and playlist. Um, no, that's literally a copy and paste of the solution.ts file. Uh, oh, that is funny. <laughs> I love this. I love this so much. So I'm curious. So, so let's try it a different way because here we were able. Cody was like one of the big benefits uh, of Cody is that it looks at your entire project and it'll look at the relevant files and find the relevant context to give you uh, the, the, you know, the, the answer. And especially in this case where we had the solution here with us, Cody was able to go in there and, and find it, which does definitely feel like cheating. But let's say, let's copy the question again. But let's go into a totally new folder that doesn't have any any information other than the README and see if it can come up with a similar answer. So I'll open up a new uh, VS Code terminal and let's create a uh, brand new directory. Here, I'll do it. Um, I'll do it here. Let's do new folder and say Learning, yes. I wonder. Drop it in here. I would love and, to see it with and or without the uh, the tests, the unit tests alongside it. Because I I remember when I've when I've used Cody, uh, it's it's generally been able to use tests to figure out shapes of things. Okay, so so let's do it without any tests, just kind of a, a zero shot. Uh, we have our index.ps file. Let's open up a chat. And we'll use Cloud3 Opus. So in this case, um, we're not using a GitHub re repository, so, so we don't have embeddings. And the search, it did index this directory learning TS, but the only thing we have in here is just this index.ts file. So there's no additional context for Cody to pull in from here. So if we copy and paste the same question, let's see if we get a similar or good enough or a totally different answer that, that still works. So hit enter i'm getting a strong like magician or the deck of cards shuffled you know vibe right now. <laughs> so it's trying to it has no context now so it's not going to be able to really cheat or peek uh it's just good going off of the uh off of the readme and off of the instructions so let's see how this works very excited about this and then we can throw in that that test file as well and see if if it passes. Um, so Cody is thinking. Let me just make sure we added all the right stuff. Did. Come on, Cody. Thinking real hard. There we go. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. So, da, 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 da. this is looking pretty reasonable so far. Yeah. And it gave us an explanation. So, yeah, wake Okay, so um, let's paste the code in here and then we'll go over the explanation. So we defined 
interfaces for the song, album, and playlist based on the provided data structure. So we have an interface for a song, an interface for an album, and an interface for a playlist. Song has name, artist duration, album has name, and songs. And then the playlist has the playlist name as well as a function that looks like that, that returns an array of songs. And then we have the type. So it's a playlist item. It's either a song, an album, or a playlist. Um, so number three, we define an interface unrolled playlist uh, for the return type of the unrolled playlist function, which includes the artist, object, songs, array, and total time. And then we have the unrolled playlist function. So we initialize an empty artist object, an empty songs array, and a time variable set to zero. So we have artist, songs, time. And then we iterate through each item to figure out what it is. Uh, so an item of items. If the duration is in items. So all of this kind of looks okay. Get over yeah. each song. So if it's a song, and then we return the artist, songs, and time. So if we save this code, um, and then go back to the earlier version of the VS code that has the tests, and I'll just move it off screen to copy the test file over. Um, so we have our just config, move it here, and index our test file. So right off the bat, I can tell you that it, it got a lot of stuff right. I'm really impressed. Uh, for example, uh -huh. it got the type union playlist item right. It got the return type, this artist songs and time. One thing it did get wrong, though, is we called it uh, length rather than duration in the interface. So I can uh -huh. just save you some time right there if you do a find and replace so uh, of duration to length. Okay, so this would be duration, and we can change that to length. So that, uh, and that's in the, so, so we just did a find and replace. We could have also asked Cody to, to go and make yeah. that change for us, uh, but we'll we'll skip it for now. And then, so if we try to run the test now, so I'll close out this window. And in here, yeah, test. might have to do npx just dash dash watch, I think. Watch. This. And it might complain that honestly, you could just copy and paste the contents of index TS into index TS in the other folder. That might be easier oh, uh, that, because that you're going to have to install the transpiler. And we were talking earlier sense. about how TypeScript takes a little, uh, you know, a little more config. <laughs> the build tools, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's take this index.js, copy it. We'll go back into our project in index.ts and and save and then let's go so this project is in the interfaces directory inside playlists down this and then if we run the test command how many did it get it passed one. So it passed one. It failed eight of them. Uh, so test me one failed, one total. Tests eight, one passed, nine total. So take a look at, so invalid playlist item on line 45. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to go in a minute, but I do want to know, I think quickly scanning through, it calls the uh, playlist method songs rather than resolve. Um, and in the uh, the test code, it, it actually sets up a discriminated union or 
uh, algebraic data type ish uh, for the input. But I want to note that this is this is not me saying ah the AI is wrong. Uh, AI is not going to write your code for you. AI will give you a starting point that you can then use to iterate. Like no yep. no tool these days is able to write code perfectly to begin with. Least of all the humans who have traditionally been writing it. So I I'm excited at how close it got. Like it got a lot of stuff really right. And the human having to tweak it is is good. It means that you have to actually read the stuff that got written for you and to understand how it works. So yep. I see that. Yeah. This and and that is an absolute great point. And, and yeah, I, I didn't realize we were up on time, uh, but I'll spend a little bit of time uh, hacking at, on this and uh, trying to see if I can get Cody to uh, fix all the errors. But, but yeah, it's very rare that the uh, AI, whether it's Cody or, or a different tool, will give you fully functioning working code uh from from day one for, from you know the first shot but i think overall it gave us a really good starting point where we can go in now and tweak it and make the adjustments to make sure that the tests pass absolutely um yeah. awesome uh, well josh with... thank you so oh sorry go ahead no no i was about to say the same thing this was a pleasure <laughs> thanks for having me <laughs> yeah absolutely thank you so much for uh spending an hour teaching us about uh, TypeScript, uh, again, you know, check out learningtypescript.com and the Learning TypeScript book. Uh, I know, Josh, you have to drop this, so feel free to drop it anytime. But uh, I'll hang around for a few minutes so that we can pick a winner and uh, get them a copy of the Learning TypeScript book that is here. And um, how do we want to do this, Justin? Do you have an idea of how many people we have uh, currently that are so let's do it this we, way. Um, if you if you would like to be entered into the raffle, just reply, post a comment saying I'm in or hello or Cody, and I will take all those names and ask Cody to pick one of them. And uh, that's how we'll pick the winner. So let's take uh, two minutes for folks to leave a comment saying that they would like uh, a chance to, to win the book and we'll pick one from there. And Justin Rocks counts as a as a comment. Okay, I'll, I'll take it. Okay, we got two. And while we do that, I will. Uh... How do you get spaces in your doc? I think it, I'm not the only one who wants to know that. In your the... in, in your doc below, like you have these big spaces, and I want to know how you do it. And the, oh, the Mac doc. Uh, I'm not. I'm not quite sure what you're. Like on your on anyway. We'll, oh, we'll these that. these yeah, guys. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's a um. Oh gosh, you you have to Google it. It's a it's a little terminal script you run, and it basically adds an empty empty space that you can drag around. But uh, it's like one short script that adds an empty icon that that's not clickable and uh, gives you gives you the spaces. But uh, I forget what the what the actual script is. All good. I'll I'll, I'll do that. Um, okay. Cool. So I think we have one, two, three, four that are in. So let's. Uh... Cool. So let's do this. We'll ask Cody. Hey Cody, can you help us pick a winner for today's raffle? Uh, the winner will get Josh's. Uh, learning TypeScript book. The contestants are, let's see, so we have Inlows, Tech News, Marvin, oh, uh, Inlow again, uh, Andre, and Primo. So I think we're good there. Please randomly pick one of these five, one, two, three, one of these four individuals to win. So here we go. It's gonna to be totally random. We're doing it. Three is Andre. All right, so it looks like using a random number generator with a range of one to four, uh, the randomly generated number is three, which is Andre uh, Solom. So uh, Andre, you you win. Congratulations. Um, email 
community at sourcegraph.com and then I'll get your info and send the book over. Perfect. Congrats. And uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in. Yeah, Andre, just uh, email us at community and, and Justin will take care of uh, shipping out the book for you. And uh, congratulations. Thank you all so much for uh, tuning in today. Uh, I hope you all have a great day and uh, we'll see you on the next stream. And if you have any suggestions on what type of content you'd like us to cover, what you'd like to see with Cody or anything uh, programming related, join us in our Discord community. Um, reach out there and we'll uh, we'll do more of these. Thank you all. Yeah. Thanks.